In the next session, our guest Michal Plachta, specialized in developing distributed applications, will talk to us about ACO cluster. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, hello everybody. My name is Michal, and uh, I work at Codo Technology, but not in the Sofia office, in Krakow in Poland. And uh, I must warn you, this session is uh, very technical, so there will be live coding, lots of different concepts I want to introduce. And there will be four uh, design uh, time slots for you to ask questions. So I'm here for you. You can ask questions, you can learn something, so please use those op opportunities whenever something's unclear, all right? So what's inside? What this talk is about? We will create a very, very simple web service and then we'll measure its performance, and then we'll make it scalable, and that's all. We'll be using ACA and Scala for that. So uh, since this is a Java conference, uh, I also prepared two tutorials. Both are just one slide uh, for you. Let's start. So ACA tutorial. First things first, how many of you have used ACA, like in a side project or, or normal project? OK. So for the rest of you, uh, just three main things to remember in order to understand the live coding part. So, uh, ACA actors uh, send, send messages to each other. And each actor just process message one at a time, so it more or less is just one thread. So one thread is used in order to process the message for one actor. So this makes us sure that we can really have some state inside the actor and it, it will not be concurrently accessed. And there are two types of communications betw between actors. One of them is tell, which is just I'm sending a message to an, to an actor and forget about it. And the second one is ask. So I'm sending a message to an actor and, and uh, wait for a, for a reply of some kind. And this reply is model modeled as future. So we just get a future, so it's uh, all asynchronous. Actors can have children. And just like in life, uh, when you create a child, you, you are responsible for, for this child. So whenever your child throws an exception or uh, <laughs> does something that's not very cool, uh, you are responsible uh, of taking care of it, uh, maybe creating another one or doing uh, lots of different uh, cool things. But this is called supervision. It's in ACA and it's in uh, any actor model. So all the actors form a, uh, supervision trees. So I'm responsible for my children. The children, when they, whenever they create another children, uh, they are also responsible for them. And the, the final thing to remember is uh, the mailbox. So each actor ha has a mailbox, and the messages are enqueued by uh, other actors, and I'm just taking the message uh, one, at a, one at a time from the mailbox. And the one slight Scala tutorial. Uh, has two parts. First, of, first, uh, first part is a look at uh, the left part of the screen. It's a Java code for a simple, very simple junction class. It has just one field ID. It has constructor, uh, some uh, one getter, hash code equals, uh, copy methods which I needed to comment out because they, yeah, they don't fit the slide. So on the left side, you have a Java class and the Scala uh, part is the same thing. So semantically, it's, it's the same. And it's called case class. So whenever you define a case class, uh, it already has cache code equals and all those things. So you can just use it uh, as, normal, as normal object. And it's very, very cool. And in ACA, we are using it all over the place. Uh, for example, in pattern matching, which is the second thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, so in this code snippet at the bo uh, right bottom, you can see that MSG is an instance of an object, of, a, of, of any class. And we just uh, pattern match over it. So uh, the first case means that whenever this MSG is instance of junction, we just execute this block of code. And the cool part is the extraction. So by defining the ID here, we already have access to ID. We don't have to do more than that. So just two uh, concepts in order to uh, understand the technical uh, live coding part. So. The example we want to implement is this kind of sor sorting subsystem. So we will have a, a HTTP web service. Whenever container, a container on this conveyor goes here, uh, there is a scanner. It scans the container ID and calls our web service. 
And our web service needs to make a decision whether this container should go to the uh, right conveyor or straight ahead to, uh, and be on this, the same conveyor. And the same for this junction and the same for this junction. So, uh, so our web service will make the decision about uh, movement of, of containers on the uh, sorting subs subsystem. And the API looks like that. So uh, we'll have a junctions, then junction ID, then decision for container, container ID, and it will return a JSON with the target conveyor ID. So assumptions, uh, I want to focus on performance. So uh, the business logic is already defined. We'll just call one function. And it takes 5 to 10 millis uh, to, uh, to make a decision. So we need to take that into account. Okay, any questions about that, about the example we want to implement? Cool. So let's code it. Uh, we'll create an actor, a REST interface actor. It will be extending an actor trait. And each actor needs to have a receive method. So this is the only method you need to have in actor in order for it to work. And of course, uh, the receive method here uh, will we'll create it using a helper method, run route, because this is an HTTP service. OK? And what this, it does, each HTTP request is modeled as a message. So this actor for each HTTP request will receive a message, HTTP service base. And this message will go through the route. Route is a, is, is a concept that will allow us to, to model HTTP services very easily. So the first uh, part of the route, the first directive, is path. So we'll define it as junctions, some int number, then a decision for container, and another int number. Those are junction ID. The first int number is junction ID. The second one is container ID. So what it does is whenever this message, HTTP request message, goes into it, uh, it needs to be checked against this path directive. directive. So it needs to uh, uh, be, uh, in, it needs to call this junction slash int number slash decision for container slash int number endpoint. If it if it's not, it's just rejected. So we got an HTTP error. But if it, but if it satisfies it, we go to the nested route. And the nested route, the nested directive is get. What this means is whenever this is uh, get HTTP method request, then we go into the nested directive. And in this case, it's just complete. So we complete the, all, uh, the whole HTTP re request here. So in this block of code where my cursor currently is, we have access to j both junction ID, container ID, and we know that it is this endpoint. It is a GET request. So all, all those stuff are already known to us. So let's create a junction object, which is a, a case class I've shown you on the Scala tutorial slide. And it just takes ID. Uh, let's, let's see. So this is a domain of our application junction and a junction and container. So I also cre create a container. Same stuff. Container ID. And let's make a decision. And as I told you, decisions, where should the container go, is the, is the method that takes 5 to 10 milli millis to, to finish. And it takes. Uh, junction and container conveniently. So we need to return something to because this is HTTP request. So our client, the client that requested it, waits for a response, and uh, we will do something like uh, go case class. I will show you a go case class in a, in a minute. So we are just creating a go go case class which takes this decision. Decision is just a string, and this is a definition of go case class. Uh, as you see, those three lines here, uh, those are just so that our object can be serialized to JSON. So we now know we can pass around this Go object, and those three, line, uh, those three lines are enough in order to have, have, it, uh, serialize, have it be serializ serializable uh, when we want to uh, implement JSON API. And uh, yeah, what we need to do is we need to bind to an interface with a port. So this is the last thing I need to do here. But first, let's, let me create 
let me pass the actor system. Actor system is uh, something that is like a general environment for all the actors. So if an actor is part of the actor system, it can communicate with other, other actors in the same actor system. So we will just pass the system of, of this actor and send a message to IO actor. Sending a message in ACA is just using this exclamation mark. So we are sending a message to IO actor, please let me, myself, be bounded, bound to the interface. Zero, 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 and port 8080. Okay. So this is the whole actor uh, that makes a decision. Let's uh, create a application. So this is a, a app is a Scala for main method in Java. So it's it's a convenience uh, trait, and we just do uh, two lines of code in order to start our application. First one is uh, creating the system itself, so the system that our application will use. It's actor system sorter, and creating the REST interface actor inside this system. Props is a factory for this actor. Uh, new REST interface, and that's, and that's all. Let's run it and see whether it works. If it compiles, it works, right? OK, it works. It worked. It is bound to 8080. Let's check. Let's check HTTP decision for content. Can you see? Can you see it? The right part? Or should I make it bigger? OK, so as you see, I've, uh, I've made a HTTP request to junctions, decision for container, and there's a, this go message serialized to JSON uh, with the target conveyor that the container should go to. OK. Uh, the one thing's missing here, we don't know anything uh, from the inside of the application, so let's add some logging to our REST, REST interface actor. Adding the logging is very easy. We just, uh, we just need another trait, actor logging, and like that, we have a log object that we can use. So here we have request for junction, junction ID, and container, container ID. Let's restart. Uh, let's restart the application. Two requests, and yeah, the logs are there. Okay, let's get slides. So. What we did is just a REST interface actor. Uh, the messages are processed uh, sequentially. As I said before, one actor can process messages just using one thread. So each HTTP request is processed sequentially using this model. So we may imagine that we get the lowest possible throughput. But in order to know what the lowest possible throughput is, let's do some throughput testing. So we'll do uh, five URLs for five different junctions, all uh, all of them will be called 2,000 times, and uh, those calls will be in parallel. And we'll be using this kind of command line script uh, using uh, GNU Parallel and Apache Bench. OK? And disclaimer, don't do throughput testing on your laptops, which I'm going to uh, forget for a moment. What I did, I capped a cabit so that the, the results are more real. So Akka is using just two threads, and this is a, co a four-core computer with hyper-threading, so the results should be meaningful. Uh, yeah. Let's do it. The command line script I've shown you, and let's see whether the application, yeah, the requests are going in. And now this is, it's the first time slot for, for questions. Anything's unclear, please ask, ask them. Anybody? So it's a spray. Uh, I, will re I will repeat the question. So is the HTTP service base part of Scala or Akka? Uh, neither of them. It's part of Spray framework. But Spray is becoming part of Akka HTTP 
2.44 is the la latest version, and the API is basically more or less the same. A few name changed. But for example, the routes, this, this definition here is the same uh, in HTTP. Okay, as you see, uh, we are still waiting. Any, any more questions? No questions? So we just wait. Okay. Yes, okay. So as you see here, we have uh, around 33 requests per second on average, so uh, this is our lowest throughput. Now we know what to aim for. Okay, so again, uh, REST interface messages are, HTTP request messages are processed sequentially. Third, around 33, 34 requests per second on this computer. So let's improve it. The first idea, so the second step, improvement. The first idea is let's create another actor because that's what we do in ACA. Whenever something's wrong, we create another actor. And this is normal. So we create a sorting decider actor and we'll just, it, it will be responsible for all the logic. So do you think it's a good idea? Who thinks it, it's a good idea? One, one, two. And uh, who thinks uh, this is not a good idea? One. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's let's check it then. It will be very quick. So I'm just I would want to extract this functionality into another actor. The other actor will, is called sorting decider. So yeah, okay. Sorting decider extends what what it does extend. Actor. Okay. And it has to have one method, receive. And here's the pattern matching kicking in. Where should let's the container go? This is a case class that we want to define. It will have a junction and container. So this is a pattern matching. The message is not yet defined. I just wanted to copy it. OK, so let's, uh, let's, find, let's create this message, create class. And yeah, it's junction, junction, container of type container. OK. We'll put it into messages here so that everything, ev each of our messages is, is uh, in the same place so that we know our APIs. And yeah, here we, here we have, the, this is uh, an actor, but we need to remember that uh, since this is an actor communication, we only communicate by using uh, messages and sending them. So here we need to reply to the sending actor, so to ours, to the sender of this message with the response. So we, we are sending the same Go message, but to the sender. And let's uh, do the ask here. So we'll be asking this, where should the container go? We'll create this message as we go. And we wait five seconds, because it's asynchronous communication. So we wait five seconds in order to get the response. If not, we'll time out. And uh, we want to have a Go message. And decider, as you see, is, on, is uh, highlighted because uh, it's it doesn't exist, so let's pass the decider actor uh, in the constructor. And since we are doing constructor, let's also do exposed port here so that it's not hard-coded. Okay, that's how it looks like. Single node application, as you see, REST interface is not uh, properly constructed. The first one is decider actor, and the second one is 8080 for now. OK. And the CIDR actor needs to be created. So uh, we are creating actor of, what's the name of the actor we created that sends back the message go? Remember? Sorting the CIDR. Yeah. OK. Now if it compiles, it works. OK, it compiled. Let's check the, let's check the, let's check the performance again. See, okay, I'm running the same uh, script. Okay, now this the, it's, it's a guessing game first. How many requests per second do you think will there be? Is it less than 33 per second? Okay, two, four, five. More than 33? The same about 33? Okay, and there's a place for questions also. So this part is something unclear. Please ask a question. 
So I suppose we need to wait. I, I prepared for this occasion. Okay. <laughs> no questions. Okay. It, it will take around 20 seconds, more or less. We'll try to. So we uh, we know that's uh, that's not probably not a very uh, different. Yeah. So as you see, it's more or less the same. Do you know why? Who knows? So yeah. Yes, exactly. I'm using the same number of threads. What I did, I just extracted the logic into another actor, but this actor is still sequentially processing the same messages. So uh, from the per performance perspective, we, didn't we haven't uh, gained anything. So let's try a different idea. So whenever something's wrong, what we do, we create another level of actors, but this time we create children. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll do a middle tier, tier of, of actors, it will be one actor which will act as a router. So it will be just, just parent of our sorting deciders. And what it will do, it will create a new sorting decider for each junction. So it will just, just get the request and see and route the message to the right sorting decider actor. And sorting decider actors are responsible for each, uh, each of them is responsible for just one junction. So, uh, sneak peek. <laughs> let's, let's do that. Let's implement that. So, uh, deciders guardian. Again, class deciders guardian extends actor, right? What's the name of the method? Receive. Good. Case, where should I go? The same message. We, we won't be creating more messages. So, the same message, where should the container go, right? Uh, I need to rename it. Where should the container go? It's better. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay. Where should the container go? This is, uh, we'll be using the whole message. So right now, what we need to do is create a name for our chil children, for our child. This name will be just J and the junction ID, MSG junction ID. Now we need to create our child, our worker, which will do the, uh, the, do the job of deciding. So the worker will be system, uh, sorry, context, actor of, context because we are creating our, ch our child, props, this, uh, sorting decider and uh, the name of the of the actor itself but if it doesn't exist so we get all go get or else we just uh, sorry the other way around let's first check whether we have an actor so context context child name get or else so, whenever we have a child, we just get it and route the message to it. And if not, we create a new actor here. And what we do is just forward the message to the actor. And that's all. What we need to change is to change the decider here, right? So the rest interface will get our new guardian and the rest of it won't change. Decider's guardian. Okay. Let's check it. All right. So, processing messages. Time for questions. So again, what we have is HTTP requests go into REST interface. It's, it's just uh, routing the messages to the decider's guardian which then creates children per junction and routes the messages if the uh, actor already exists. So, guessing game again, who thinks it will be a better performance? Okay, who thinks, who thinks it's not going to be better? One person. 
Okay, as you see, it's like 66, so it, it doubled. Uh, why it doubled? As I said, ACA is just using two threads because I capped it, and that's why all the messages are processed only by those, those two threads. But as, a, as you see, whenever we, uh, whenever we add a new thread, the, the performance will be better. And what's, uh, what's the technique uh, called, the, the one that I just described? It's just scaling up, right? So whenever you use ACA and you have actors and you just uh, upgrade your, core pro uh, your processor to have more cores, you will get some performance gain if you have a model like that. So for example, for each new junction, and new, uh, add a new core, core and then you, you will have a, the same performance for, for everybody. So the resources, uh, the, the resources will be used uh, properly. What about scaling out? So what if we are not, uh, we can't afford a, a new processor with, uh, a better, uh, with better features? What if we want to just add another computer and have a better performance? What do you think? So traditionally, in Java, uh, in Java world, you just copy the same functionality. For example, you have a JBoss, and, and you just uh, create another JBoss and, and cluster them, right? And uh, this is uh, called manual scaling out, basically. And those are the same, uh, the same applications I already have. Uh, but the left one is responsible for junctions 1 to 3, and the, and the right one is responsible for junctions uh, 4 to 6. So this will work. But we need to remember that there has to be a, a very uh, nice and intelligent load balancer, right? So it, it cannot be just a round-robin load balancer. It needs to know, it needs to extract some data from the request and pass them to the right node. And the second problem is what happens when the right node dies? Well, we don't have functionality for junctions 4 to 6. But why? Uh, but why? Since we still have a left node, which knows, uh, which knows how to deal with, uh, with, with this, how to do the functionality. So we should uh, be able to have like a backup, right? Maybe a lower performance for a bit until the right node is back up again. But uh, in this model, we cannot do that. Enter sharding. So as you see, the manual scaling out thing, uh, it's probably the same. Uh, here, but with two differences. First, one, we don't need the decider's guardian actor that I just wrote. Uh, sh uh, shard region is an actor from ACA. So uh, a cluster sharding uh, extension has something like shard region, and it's just, it's just an actor that does the same thing as the decider guardian does, but uh, it has more features than that. For example, it's synchronized between nodes. We, we can have as many nodes as we, uh, as we want, uh, I was just uh, showing you two, uh, like in this picture. So both shard regions are synchronized with each other. And what does, what does it mean? We can, for example, uh, send a request for junction 4 into the left node, and shard region will know that the, this sorting decider for the junction number 4 is on the right side, so it will pass the, shard, uh, the, the message to the right shard region, to the right node. And uh, each of those uh, nodes are just another, uh, are just the different uh, JVMs in this case. And the second important thing is the uh, HM hash function here. So each message that goes into shared region is, ha is calculated using the hash function that we, that we provide. And this fu hash function is the only functionality you need to define in order to make sh uh, sharding work, uh, working, okay? So we'll be defining two hash functions. First one is extract shard ID, means which shard ID this message should go to. Shard ID meaning just the in integer. For example, for, uh, if we can have a function that, uh, that says if the uh, junction ID is less than 10, then uh, let's choose the shard ID number 0, which will be, deployed, which will be uh, on the left node. And otherwise, just uh, use shard ID uh, number one, which is the right one here. And the second hash function is the cho choosing the right instance of sorting decider. So we know that message is on the right node, on the right, in the right JVM, and now we need to uh, find out what sorting decider needs to process this message. So th just two functionalities. So let's, let's do that, and please prepare uh, to have some questions. 
So let's start. Uh, let's start sorting, sorting the cider. There will not be much code uh, here. So object, uh, companion object in Scala, sorting the cider. We just want to have some, um, uh, some values, like name, name which, uh, which, is, which will be sorting the cider. Then props. So the same thing, sorting the cider. And, the and two last things are the hash function. First one, extract shard ID. Extract shard ID type. Where should the container go is the message. Uh, and we just want to uh, find out which shard ID the message should go to. So in order to do that, we just need a junction, right? We don't need the container here, so we just get junction and uh, get back a message, uh, sorry, junction. ID. For demonstration purposes, I will just do two shards. So one of them will be zero, and the second one will be one. And to string, because this is the API. So this is the first function, and the second function, extract entity, extract entity ID. Uh, the same thing, where should the container go? But this time, uh, we want to have the whole message. And what we want to do here, we are choosing, we are on the right node, on the right, in the right shard. We, we are choosing which uh, instance of sorting decider uh, sharding extension should choose. So in this case, it's, uh, again, junction ID. It needs to be string. And the message itself that needs to be passed. OK, that's it here. And of course, we also need to change uh, to create a new application sharding, sharded up actor system. It, it is a different configuration. So uh, I will just show you a configuration file. To load the configuration file, we just need config factory here. It's also, uh, it's also type safe, uh, very, very cool library, type safe config. Uh, you can use it in Java also. Load sharded. So what it means, sorry, what it means, please load sharded.conf file. It looks like that. So it has the diff different, some different uh, parameters to tweak. What we are, are interested in is application.name and application.exposed port. So this is all put in the, uh, in the configuration file. Why do we need that? It's easily, uh, all the things that we are defined in the config file are easily overridden by uh, environmental va variables. I want to create two JVMs using the same jar file. So that's why uh, I want to just, uh, just to have uh, the ability to overwrite uh, exposed port. Okay, let's get back here. Let's create a, let's create this actor system, and let's use a config so this application is better. Get string application sorry clustering cluster name, right? Uh, where is the clustering cluster name sort? Yeah, that's true, and the config itself. And here we can also uh, do config get int application exposed port. All right. We need to start the sharding extension on each of the JVMs, and they will connect automatically. So those five lines I'm going to write right here, cluster sharding of the, in this ACA system, we want to start a shard region. And a type name is the sorting decider name that we defined. Props, entity props, are the props that we also just defined. And there are settings. We, we can tweak lots of things, really. Cluster sharding settings. And the two fun uh, hash functions, extract shard ID, Shard ID and the second one is extract and TT ID. Yeah, so this is all we need in order to start this extension. And the uh, JVMs, how many uh, of them will create, will will connect with each other. And uh, uh, now we just need a, another definition of decider because it's not uh, decider's guardian anymore. Uh, it's just an actor 
that we can reference using its name only. So cluster sharding system, shard region, and sorting decider name. So on each node, you can just refer to the actor, to the shard region actor by name, and the message will be, transfer, will be transferred to the right location, to the right sorting decider on the right node. And yeah, props, that's all. So let's try to start the shard it up, see if it works. Uh, more messages because, as I said, they're trying to connect with, uh, with each other. Let's find out if it's working fine. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to use the Java, uh, Java minus jar. I'll make it bigger a little bit. I want to create two. Uh, I want to create two instances, right? Java minus jar, uh, sorting decider. So this is the first instance, and here's the second instance with the uh, two ports overridden, so that they can uh, connect with each other. So as we see, uh, those nodes connected to each other, and now we can try to do our test. And the time for questions. What transport is used to connect uh, the two shards together? So ACA is using TCP under, uh, under the hood, and the Java serialization is, is turned on by default, which is not very performant. You can, uh, you can change it to something different. But this is a, t a, t a strictly TCP commun communication. So uh, does this mean that the response travels a serialized object? Uh, if, let's say if the if the request hits shard one and it's routed to shard two, then the response is serialized object to shard one back and then uh, back to JSON. Yes, that's correct. Uh, okay, and another question about the hashing function uh, functions: Are they executed on each shard? Meaning, if if let's say it's executed on shard one, then the message travels to shard two uh, and then is the caching function executed again? No. Uh, so basically it's uh, because the functions are, are defined in compile time. So Akka is using some kind of caches. So uh, next time the same messages, the, the same kind of message is sent, uh, the, the shard region knows exactly where, where to send it without executing the hash function. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions? Do you have a question? Okay, so as you see, we, we got some uh, real improvement here. There's like 100 requests per second. We went from 30, and there are, there are not man, so many lines of code, right? And we have two JVMs running. We could, we could add an, another one if we want. Yeah, around uh, 100. So the sharding, what it gives us, it's an automatic distribution. So we can, for example, remove one of those nodes, and the functionality will still work. Of course, the performance will be worse, but the, uh, it will work fine. Uh, on the other hand, if we add more, more, uh, more nodes, the shards will be propagated, migrated, and balanced uh, eventually uh, on those new nodes and, sh and, and shards. And yeah, and the one important thing from the program, uh, programmer perspective is that we are using just logical references, using strings, right? So we don't have to get something first and then send message to it. We are just sending a message to a shard region with this name, and the shard, uh, Akka extension just knows where to send the message. And uh, yeah, so the, the whole project is on GitHub, and I uh, created branches for you guys, so you can try it at home. Uh, step zero, step one, step two, step three. And the master one is the, the sharded version. Uh, also, there is a blog post which takes you step by step throughout the whole implementation. So you can also do, uh, do that. I will tweet the slides uh, after the talk so you, you will be able to, uh, to uh, see it for yourselves. OK, thank you very much. And are there any questions? Sorry, can we tweak the performance by just adding another actors, not just by sharding? So uh, 
And uh, for example, how, ma how many and what kind of actors? Uh, just instances on the same node uh, make many other actors. Uh. For example, uh, for container. Yes. Yes, of course. This this can happen. But then you need to take into consideration how many threads you want to create on this computer, right? So if there are like millions of containers, then probably this can have this can be a problem problematic. But yeah, of course, uh, it's just a model I, I've uh, taken, the approach uh, using this model. You can have a different one. Thanks. Any more questions? Yeah. At here at, at the back. I'm just asking, how many years uh, did you uh, did you work with this technology? Uh, working. Okay, it's two years now. Okay. And uh, yeah, we have a uh, we have several uh, Aka applications, and uh, right now we we are trying to uh, we are trying to support them on on, on production. This, those are this, those are like first months of of real production. But yeah, it, it's it's t two years now. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you very much, cheers, and have a nice day.